Mungo National Park is a protected national park that is located in southwestern New South Wales. The over 110,000 hectare national park is situated approximately 875 kilometres west of Sydney in the Bow Reynolds Shire. Mungo National Park is the traditional meeting place of the Muthi Muthi, Nyampa and Barkindji Aboriginal nations. People are no longer able to climb the sand dunes as stricter rules have been enforced. Begin your exploration at Mungo Visitor Centre, the nerve centre of the park. Find out more about the area's significance to its traditional owners and visiting scientists. Learn about its megafauna and the once full Lake Mungo, as well as the formation of the park's unique landscape. The visitor centre is staffed only during school holidays when rangers from the region's three Aboriginal groups lead park discovery tours. Why not try the two and a half hour tag along tour of the Walls of China? Alternatively, you can take the Mungo self-guided drive tour with the free brochure Driving the Mungo Story. This is available from the centre. Inside Mungo National Park, you can bunk at the Shearer's Quarters, or you can camp at Main Camp, which is close to many features, and at the more remote Villar Camp on the Mungo Track. Facilities at all these places are wheelchair accessible. The recently refurbished Shearer's Quarters are in the heart of the park right beside the visitor centre. The quarters are wheelchair accessible and arranged around a central courtyard. There are showers, flush toilets and hot water. The communal kitchen dining room has all utensils and crockery, fridges and stove. Barbecues are also available in the area. Bring your own bedding. This is the main base for campers and caravans in the park and is two kilometres from the visitor centre, meeting place and Mungo Woolshed. Plenty of level gravel tent sites are scattered amongst Balas and Cypress Pines. The grassland walk starts and finishes here and also the track leading to Mungo Lookout. There are free gas barbecues and wood fireplaces available for campers. Bring your own firewood as firewood cannot be collected in the park. The Lark Campground is a great overnight spot for people taking their time driving or cycling the Mungo Track, or for those looking for a secluded campsite. No fires are allowed, but there are plenty of level gravel campsites spread out under the Blar trees. Facilities are wheelchair accessible. This campground is halfway around the Mungo Track. The route includes unpaved roads, generally suitable for two-wheel drive cars, though roads may become impassable in wet weather. Golgol Station brought mega flocks of sheep to the region, now protected by Mungo National Park. Adjacent to Mungo Visitor Centre, the Heritage Mungo Woolshed, built in 1869, harks back to the pastoral history of the dramatic yet fragile landscape. Step inside the shady cool and marvel at the ingenious drop log construction made from local cypress pine. At its peak, this shed was a hive of activity with 18 men hand shearing over 50,000 sheep. You've seen it on a postcard, now come and see it for real. One of the most iconic views in outback New South Wales. Walls of China viewing platform is the first stop on the Mungo self-guided loop track drive. This area is fully wheelchair accessible. A boardwalk provides easy access from the car park to the dunes. However, further access to the viewing is difficult without assistance. The toilet in the adjacent car park is wheelchair friendly. A magnificent sight at sunrise or sunset. Gaze across at the dramatic formation sculpted by wind and erosion. It's not just the scenic desert views that will take your breath away. These lunettes harbour vital clues to the evolution of life on Earth. Embedded deep within the ancient lake beds, historic relics of early Aboriginal culture have been discovered, believed to be over 36,000 years old. 
close your eyes and imagine a fertile land fed by vast lakes where wombats the size of buffaloes graze during the last ice age. It is an unsealed road suitable for two-wheel drive vehicles in dry weather only. The red kangaroo is an iconic Australian animal and the world's largest marsupial. They can be found in outback New South Wales national parks and are common in the Mungo National Park. Large males have reddish fur and can reach a height of 2 metres, while females are considerably smaller and have blue-grey fur. Red kangaroos are herbivores and mainly eat grass. Other species of kangaroo include western grey and eastern grey kangaroos. There are many bird species in Mungo National Park, including galahs, pink cockatoos, budgerigars, zebra finches, singing honey eaters, and variegated fairy wrens. There are also snakes like the western brown snake, eastern brown snake, and the king brown snake. Other mammals include the western pygmy possum, Gould's wattled bat, little mastiff bat, short beak echidna, and common dunnart. There are hundreds of other snakes, spiders, birds, reptiles, mammals, not to mention the myriad of flora to be found in this rugged part of New South Wales. Mungo is one of a handful of places where you can see the extraordinary effects of erosion on the landscape. Red Top Lookout and Boardwalk is an unbeatable vantage point offering bird's eye views of the park's remarkable deep ravines rippling patterns and rich textures. From Mungo Visitor Centre, it's an easy half hour drive to the lookout via the Mungo self-guided drive tour. Along the way, you'll find signs discussing the long-term climate changes that led to the lakes in Mungo National Park drying out. The Mallee Stop walking track offers a fascinating introduction to the breathtaking scenic contrast of our back New South Wales. Wander through an environment that is harsh and beautiful. The ground is like a moonscape but brimming with plant life. The red earth stark against an impossibly blue sky. Pack a picnic lunch and set out from Mallee Stop positioned on the eastern side of Lake Mungo along the Mungo self-guided drive tour. You'll loop through the area of Mallee Eucalypts, then head over a low dune studded with pointy spinifex grass. The track also features signs explaining the diversity of the Mallee species encountered, as well as other equally significant plants and Mungo's fauna. It's been over 15,000 years since the Willandra Lakes World Heritage Region held water. So Vigas World Picnic Area is a welcome oasis in the dramatic desert landscape of today. This historic picnic spot on the Mungo self-guided drive tour features panoramic desert views that hum with life. Harking back to its watery origins, the well is based on a natural soak and a haven for local wildlife. You'll see a mosaic of wildlife tracks in the sand that belong to creatures like the common donut. Keep an eye out for the vibrant pink cockatoos and ringneck parrots. Unpack a picnic camper at the nearby tables and soak up the vast scenic landscape under huge skies. If you're tempted to stay for the spectacular sunset and don't mind a bit of walking, why not pitch your tent at Balar Campground for an unforgettable night under the stars? Vigas Well is a natural soak which was used by local Aborigines during times of drought. It was a reliable source of water and when Europeans started moving through the area, they used it to water horses and bullocks. The well was dug in the 1930s by Roy Vigar. It is said that since Europeans arrived, it has only dried up once. The Zancy Homestead site comprises a range of buildings, some still proudly in their original condition having been refurbished and some of which are now only ruins. Located along the Mungo self-guided drive tour, 
The site can also be reached via Zancy Pastoral Loop. Built from iron and flattened kerosene tins, the original homestead had two rooms and a small kitchen, where cooking was carried out over an open fire and with camp ovens. Today you can visit the homestead's renowned dugout, built into the ground for use as a cool room. Lose yourself in Mungo's pastoral heritage at the shearing shed and yards, and check out the drop pine log walled and spinifex thatch stables. Take a few photos of the site's remarkable ruins, which include a brick fireplace and chimney, and of a water tank. Perhaps the most photographed feature, however, is the old outhouse, a fine example of the historic dunny out the back.